Um, SmackDown also went ahead and, and, and introduced a top 10 list. Um, there's some that have been talked about for a while. I talked about it last week. I'm talking about how will WWE go ahead to do this top 10 list. And I can go through the list right here for you. Uh, Dave Brown went on to talk about it on the show. At number 10, we have the Perfect 10 himself, Ty Dillinger. Uh, number 9, we have Randy Orton. Number 8, we have Becky Lynch. Number seven, you had the Smack ta- you had the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos. Now get this: at number six, you have the New Day, who are not the Tag Team Champions, which is kind of odd. Uh, number five, you had United States Champion Bobby Roode. Number four, Naomi. Number three, Nakamura. Uh, number two, Charlotte. And number one, the WWE Champion himself, AJ Styles. Um, I think this list makes good sense. I think it's interesting to see the dynamic of how this would go to the future and how WWE's uh, superstars will, how they'll go in the rankings and what determines their rankings. Uh, what's some interesting segment that you can do, like, oh, well, you just run them in the rankings, so you just went down the rankings. So, because remember, the superstars get to vote for who goes on the top 10 list and who will be, and I, I think it's going based off of uh, hard work, uh, athleticism, locker room leadership, and they can't vote for themselves, so I think it's interesting. Uh, Tyler Dillinger, I think he's in de- I think he's in need of a push. I think uh, Tyler Dillinger was really popular in NXT. Um, he was real high, as we saw at last year's Royal Rumble when he came out number ten. He got a, a loud reaction. There's a lot of tens going around for a while too, but they cooled him off. Uh, he wasn't really doing nothing. He was in the mid cards. Um, he was gone for a while too. That was a period of time when you even see Tyler Dillinger on TV. I forgot about the guy. But they brought him back, and he started wrestling um, some good matches, and he ended up in the few. He ended up in the triple threat match with uh, AJ Styles, uh, Baron Corbin, and Todd Dillinger. Well, himself, I mean, <laughs> at the Hell in Cell MVP United States title. Um, so I think Todd Dillinger will be on this list. I think it's uh, I think it's real good for him. Uh, hopefully, he can move up in the rankings, and uh, he'll have some interesting matches. Randy Orton, number nine, very interesting. Um, Randy Orton is a veteran. We all know he's the multi-time world champion. That's a name that everybody knows. If you still listen to this podcast, if even if you don't watch wrestling and you woke up listening to it and you hear Randy Orton, you know who Randy Orton is. You may not know everybody else I'm talking about, but you know who Randy Orton is. But Randy Orton's at number nine. Um, I think that's very interesting that he's at number nine. Um, but if you look at what he's got going on right now, like I said, they ain't really doing nothing with the guy. Uh, I think, like I said, he'll Randy Orton would do good. Uh, possibly. Put him in some fuse. Uh, He'll have some interesting feuds going. If you do some uh, at WrestleMania, you possibly do a him versus Nakamura at a uh, fast lane. You possibly do that. Um, do him like I, like I also just mentioned not too long ago. Do him versus Bob Roof for United States title. If you do that, uh, Becky Lynch at number eight. Uh, she just came. She came out a couple weeks ago from an uh, from shooting film for the Marine. So yeah, she's there. Um, I love Becky Lynch by the way. Uh, number seven. Yes, the, the Usos, but number six you had the New Day. The New Day, who haven't, who who I feel they have nothing to do right now as well. Uh, what's their next move on SmackDown? We found this problem on Raw where they didn't have nothing to do, and I think with them going to SmackDown was a good move for them because they freshened up and they uh, went into their what's it? Was their first few the Usos when they got to SmackDown? Uh, I don't think so. But they had the, they had a few the great few with the Usos uh, this past uh, uh, year. But what's the next for the new day going forward? Do they start feuding with Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin, who are now officially heels, who are going around legitimately the tight? I think a big good feud right there, dude. Gable and Jordan. I mean Gable and uh, <laughs> Gable and Benjamin versus the New Day. Because uh, I think it makes total sense. We have Gable and Benjamin going around trying to talk about the legitimize legitimize. The tag team division. I think them going against a new day who comes up as goofy characters. Uh, it'll be a good few to see. Um, but with the Usos, uh, this week again we had some uh, more tension and more um, back and forth with them and the uh, the Bludgeon Brothers. Uh, the Usos came out after the Bludgeon Brothers match and uh, Harper had the whole back growing and the Usos walked past them as if they never noticed. So it's obvious that they're building towards a match between the two, whether it's at Fastlane or they're going to carry it out to WrestleMania. But I think the two will have a match, and I think the Bludger Brothers will end up coming out on top, becoming your new tag team champions. Um, <clears throat> I apologize for that. That was very unprofessional of me. Kitty Passion, but I apologize for all his passion as I I'm sorry. But anyways, back to more important topics to talk about. We had at number five, Bobby Roode. Um, like I said, 
let's go to the few with Randy Orton. I think it's something that we should go for. Uh, Naomi at number four. I think she was put there for our lessons, but she's she's a good talented wrestler. Um, I like Naomi. Uh, Nakamura at number three, coming off the heels of a Royal Rumble win, and you had Charlotte Flair, another favorite of mine. And uh, AJ Styles, uh, my favorite wrestler at number one. So I think the top ten list uh, dynamic that they got going on SmackDown is very interesting. Let's see how it plays out for the following weeks. 